Yeah. No, just come on. Well, well, I had a decaf. Hello there, folks. We're we're discussing spiritual things. Coffee. <laughs> we just had the sweetest worship service. We've got just we've been so blessed. We've got so many among us. Well, not not so many, but we've got the best worship leaders, I believe, in this entire area, and we're just so blessed by it. Mm. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. We did. I, of course, ate too much. And uh, I'm sure that'll lighten up as we head toward Christmas, right? Now pray for me. Mm. Praise God. Let's go before the Father in prayer. I've got some things the Lord put on my heart. Last night was one of those nights where I didn't get a whole lot of sleep. And uh, it's always interesting how the devil will try to attack you when he thinks you're the most vulnerable. But, you know, I learned when I'm the most vulnerable just to lean that much harder into Jesus and into the Word of God. And things are going to work out. And uh, and they have. Uh, the Lord kept speaking to me. He kept reminding me of Naaman the leper. Naaman the leper. So, <laughs> you know, I can think of more pleasant things to dream of than a leper, but not when it's God talking to you. Amen. It was so sweet what the Lord began to show me, and I want to share some things with you today. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I don't know if you've encountered this or not, but being among the Word of Faith people and that teaching and and uh, believing in the baptism of the Holy Spirit is evidenced by tongues and with the manifestations of the various gifts. Uh, it's, it's just amazing uh, what God can do when we learn how to cooperate with Him. I think the problem with a lot of people that have lacked that cooperation of the Lord has been that they tried to get God on board with their program. Now, I know those of you listening to me are much too smart for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I pray you're smarter than I was because I kind of, that was kind of my view at one time. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd read books. I, I can remember reading Norval Hayes' little book, The Laying on the Hands. And if you don't know who Norval Hayes is, Google Norval Hayes, N O R V E L H A Y E S. Google him on YouTube. I would have to think he's got to be on YouTube. Sure. And uh, I believe it'll bless you, but you better prepare yourself because he's kind of direct. <laughs> and that's an understatement. He's real easy to understand. He is. He really is. He's got the most unique teaching gift. And he, he can stand in front of you and tell you something that you've heard a hundred different times from a hundred other people, but somehow when Norval said it, it just made sense. Yep. It was just so good. But I can remember I was provoked by that little book of his because <clears throat> it implied every believer ought to lay hands on the sick and they ought to recover. And I wasn't seeing a lot of success in laying hands on the sick at the time. You know, I think a lot of people, that their spiritual education comes more by trial and error yeah. than, than sound teaching and precepts of the Word of God and, and the Word of, of God. Amen? Yeah. And uh, see, there's a lot of folks today when you start talking about God healing people or Jesus being the healer, <laughs> they want to argue, well, if, if, if that's God using you to heal people, why don't you go and be out of hospital? And they don't understand that Jesus himself encountered situations where there were people who needed healing, people yeah. he wanted to see healed. Right. But he couldn't heal. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to talk about, you know, avoiding some of the traps of the devil. The devil will often tempt folks, particularly on the outset of their spiritual development, he'll tempt folks to dive in over their heads. And when they start drowning, he's there to blame God for the outcome. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> yep. And, uh, you know, it's real good if you're going to believe God for healing to start believing God for little things. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I remember hearing, I believe it was Kenneth Copeland that was <laughs> teaching that, and he started talking about believing God to remove warts from his body or somebody's body. Maybe it wasn't him. I don't know. Yeah. And, and it just so happened I had developed a wart on my knuckle. I was working out in a, a karate studio that was just an old storage building or an industrial building. You know, the neighbors were mechanics and things of that nature. And we had a piece of the dingiest carpet you've ever seen on the floor that we would work out on. Oh, boy. And, uh, and to be real, real fanatical, we would do push-ups on your knuckles. Right. You know, even if you don't study the martial arts, you know that you're supposed to do push-ups on your knuckles, right? <laughs> 
Somehow it seemed like a good thing, and it did toughen up my knuckles, but it started toughening them up by giving me warts. <laughs> I got a wart on. So I was a prime candidate for that teaching, and I started speaking to that wart. But guess what? It was healed. Yeah. Yes. And the Lord built on that over the years, and I began to see the Lord use me in gifts of healing, working in miracles in the area of growth that had developed on people. Mm -hmm. I shared about the young man that had come to church, and his foot had a huge growth that had just come up seemingly overnight. And I prayed for him. Well, unfortunately, he didn't cooperate like I had admonished him to and exhorted him to. And he, uh, right in the middle of his miracle, he stopped it by saying, I can't believe God could do that. And it stopped. Don't ever say that. Don't, don't. Just hush your mouth. <laughs> Amen. Hush your mouth. I've, yes. I've seen so many people that fell prey to that. Well, anyway, uh, <clears throat> we've been talking about the spiritual basics here lately. And all this still plays into doing the works of Jesus. Because I believe every one of us, as we mature, we ought to resemble our elder brother. He's the firstborn of many brethren. Yes, he is. And we ought to do some of the things he did. We ought to demonstrate the character that he demonstrated. Yeah. But if we're going to do what he did, we need to understand how he did it and what he did do. Because yes. there's a lot of unrealistic thoughts about what Jesus did do. Yes. You know, we do see that there were times where multitudes were healed. But there were also times that there were people among the multitudes that were healed, but not everybody there. And, and so we're going to talk about that a little bit today. But turn with me real quick, if you would. I want to open up by looking at 1 Corinthians 12, because it talks about the equipping of the body of Christ supernaturally by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, we believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a, a, a secondary work to the new birth. In other words, it's separate from the new birth. <clears throat> there was a, an example over in Acts 19. Uh, let me get over to my text I just sent you to. Over in Acts chapter 19, there was an example <clears throat> where uh, uh, Paul encountered certain disciples from Ephesus, and he asked that they'd receive the Holy Spirit since they believed. Mm -hmm. and, and what he was essentially asking them is, since you got born again, have you received the Holy Ghost? So he didn't he he didn't believe that just because you got born again you had the Holy Ghost. Amen. It was a secondary work, amen. Yeah. And uh, he found out they weren't even born again. They were just baptized under repentance, John's baptism. And so he led them to the Lord, and then immediately they got filled with the Holy Ghost thereafter. Yeah. Now, you can get filled with the Holy Ghost at the moment you get born again. That has happened to people. Sure. It happened with the Gentile church and their inclusion. What is that, Acts 10? I'm not even sure where it's at right off. Mm -hmm. but, but it happened with the Gentiles when they were first <laughs> included. But I believe that was a sovereign working of God in that instance to convince the Jews <laughs> that he loved the Gentiles. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. they, they thought Gentiles were just brute Sweet. beasts. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I keep talking, and I hadn't got there yet, but look over at 1 Corinthians 12, and let's pray. I think I said I was going to pray earlier. Did I pray yet? I don't think I did. Let's pray. I Father, we so. just thank you for this time together with you today. We thank you for helping us to have ears to hear and eyes yes. to see what you would reveal to us by your spirit and through your word today, that we would be equipped to do that which you have called us unto. I believe that everybody within the sound of my boy, <laughs> voice was born for such a time as this. Amen. And I believe that God foresaw the, the, the challenges that you would face, the opportunities that you would have, and he has equipped you to face yes. those supernaturally. Victoriously. Victoriously. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And uh, over here, in, uh, and I'm sorry, First Corinthians chapter 12. 12. Mm -hmm. I am there, right? That's okay. My goodness. I can't see if that's telling me that's 12 or not. No, it's not telling no, me. That's 1 like Corinthians 1.1. One. One, one. <laughs> okay, my fault, folks. I'm getting so carried away. Just I, 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 need to, I need to get going with this because I really want to share something uh, with you. It reversed your numbers. No, that's what I want. 1 okay. Corinthians 12.1. <laughs> That's what I wanted the first time I tried this. There, there we go. go. There we go. In First Corinthians twelve one, <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> it's a, it says now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Amen. <clears throat> you know that you were Gentiles carried away under these dumb idols. So this is Paul speaking to Gentile believers, and uh, he said you were carried away under these dumb idols even as you were led <laughs> wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed and no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost <clears throat> now there are diversities of gifts what are these gifts he's talking about 
the the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. There are nine of them. We're gonna we're gonna talk about them here just yeah. briefly. We're not going into great detail today. I just want you to have an awareness of the existence of these gifts. Mm-hmm. I can remember early on in my experience when I'd come back to to the Lord after I'd died and gone to heaven. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I want everything you got for me. I need everything you got for me because I tried to live life yeah. on my terms by my means and I made a miserable mess out of it. Mm. And so I began to experience things. I can remember I uh, picked up a book by Mel Tari called Like a Mighty Wind. It was about the revival in Indonesia and the supernatural moving of God among his people. And I began to read that and I prayed this little prayer in there to receive the Holy Ghost. And I didn't pray in tongues right off. <clears throat> But I sincerely believed I'd received. Yeah. <laughs> and was I filled with the Holy Ghost? Yeah. I was filled with the Holy Ghost. Because I started having things happen that could have only been by right of the Holy Spirit and his investment into me. And I can remember how, uh, you know, over time I just began to have this unquenchable yearning to speak in tongues. Mm. It, it, and, and it wasn't anything I ever you understand as a backslidden <coughs> Methodist walking around and, and and hanging out in bars for years and years I never desired to speak in tongues <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> but, but now I'm serving God and experiencing the love of God in ways I'd never dreamed possible and all of a sudden I've just got this yearning I'm, I know there's something to this I need this and so uh, I can remember there was a time or two that I would wake up in the middle of the night because I heard somebody talking in another language and and the thing is is I slept alone <laughs> now this was really interesting to me because and you weren't hearing voices no I wasn't hearing voices <laughs> no. and there was there were other fruits of this uh, encounter with the Holy Ghost and these manifestations I started seeing things I'd never seen before um, you know the Bible talks about how when you're speaking an unknown tongue you edify yourself you know, sometimes you need to get edified. Yes, yes. <laughs> need to stay life. edified. Amen. Yes. And, and uh, to me, I liken that to even when you're preparing to receive the Word of God, it's kind of like when you're getting ready to plant a, a, a plot of ground, you go out there and you till up the soil and then prep you it. prep it and you put uh, fertilizer. Why do you put fertilizer on that ground? It edifies it. It yeah. builds it up and it has a charge in it so when that dead seed hits that ground, yeah. it springs to life. Yes. And yes. that's what happens with God's <laughs> word. When you start getting you ever notice the Bible became a different book when I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, it sure did. It just started making so much sense, things I never could Came understand alive. before. <laughs> Listen, before I'd gotten filled with the Holy Ghost, and when I was searching for God in my own personal sense of desperation, I remember picking up my Bible and reading uh, the book of Revelation, not a good place to start. <laughs> we don't recommend starting. No, we don't. <laughs> I remember picking it up, reading the book of Revelation, and thinking, my God, I think he must have found mushrooms on Patmos. Because, it, it, you know, the things he was describing and seeing, it just didn't make sense. Right. But then when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, suddenly things started adding up and making sense. And uh, so here he is. He's talking about this relationship where the believer that's been born again, blood washed, is a new creation, is now uh, engaged in a relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and needs an awareness of these gifts. See what happened with me is I got filled with the Holy Ghost, but I didn't understand anything about the gifts. And then when the gifts started trying to manifest in my life and through me to bless other people, I, 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 I quenched them. Mm-hmm. And it brought me such grief. I remember one night I was in a home meeting at Don Crowder's house. Don, if you ever watch this, you know, God bless you. You were such a blessing. And to this day, your memory is a blessing to me. But I can remember I was at your house and I was ministering just to the Lord, praying softly in the Spirit of the Lord. And and all of a sudden, the Lord just put within me an overwhelming sense of compassion to pray for a young lady that was there. Mm-hmm. And I quenched it. I quenched it. And, and I come to find out after the meeting that that young lady had a serious need and was going in for medical help. Yeah. And God wanted her healed. And, and I quen- I was so grieved. Mm-hmm. And I told the Lord, Lord, I said, I don't understand what this is, but I know it's you, and I'm going to educate myself in your word to find out what I need to know so I can cooperate with you. I repent, Lord. Yeah. I didn't want to quench you. And, and the Lord had mercy on I me. And I've learned a lot since then, but I'm still learning. Amen. Mm-hmm. So maybe I can help you bypass some of the 
little detours I took and dead ends I came to. So there, are, in verse 4, it says there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of administrations or different way these gifts may manifest, you could say, right. but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it's the same God which worketh all in all, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Mm -hmm. Notice it says it's given to every man, yes. yeah. <clears throat> every believer. Right. In other words, if you've received Jesus as your risen Lord and Savior, and you've confessed Him, and you've then been filled with the Holy Spirit, then you have the same Holy Spirit that I do. And, and He's going to work through your life just like He'll work through my life. Yeah. And, and the the thing is, is we need to be aware of Him. We need to be aware of the way He works so that when He tries to work through us, we don't quench Him like I did, yeah. and we can cooperate. Because it will always be to your own personal grief if you quench the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. I don't like to see other people suffer. Mm -mm. And, and I, I hated walking away from that knowing I could have hopefully averted some suffering in that girl's life, and, and I didn't do it. Well, anyway... It says, Manifestation of the Spirit, verse 7, is given to every man to profit with all, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. What is the word of wisdom? Now, I'm going to give you my definition for it, okay? I believe it is the sudden inspiration by the Spirit of God with the wisdom. Wisdom is knowing how to do what you need to do when you need to know how to do it. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Yes. <laughs> you know, there were times that the prophets, for example, uh, we're going to talk about Naaman later. Uh, remember when Naaman went to the door of the prophet and, and sought healing? I believe it was a word of wisdom that told Naaman to go take a bath. <laughs> <laughs> the fruit wore out later. Sure did. When he took a bath, now he bathed, I'm sure, hundreds of times in his life. I'd right. like to think. I'd like to think he had a sense of hygiene. Uh, but anyway, something made this one different. What made it different? He was doing so in faith, having finally submitted, repented and submitted to the word of God's <laughs> prophet. When he obeyed that word, he got the result, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Amen. And, and so the word of wisdom is is knowing what to do and how to do it when you need to know how to do what you yeah, need yeah. to do. Yes. yes. Amen. I've mm -hmm. seen that happen in my... I, I, really, it was a word of wisdom. I've shared the example about the fire uh, prior to us getting married in mm -hmm. Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Right. And I'm standing there looking at this fire just frustrated because I, I, I know God's got a solution, but I don't know what it is. And his solution wasn't for me to pray to him to, to tell him what to do. Yeah, right. <laughs> God doesn't need your insider advice. <laughs> Amen. He's got this figured out. We yeah. need his insight and his That's advice. Right. So I'm standing there, and, and I began to pray in the Spirit. Mm. Well, see, when you pray in the Spirit, that draws your attention because it's your spirit praying, not your understanding. Yeah. It draws your attention back toward the spiritual. And as I did that, the Holy Ghost down on the inside of me just ever so calmly said, speak to that wind. Mm -hmm. yes. Command that wind to cease. Right. Because the wind is what made that fire uncontainable. Yeah. All, all that was happening was they'd try to spray water on it, yeah. and it would freeze and fall to the ground. Mm -hmm. And they had several firefighters get injured or slip ice. and fall on the ice. Yeah. So it wasn't going anywhere. And later on on the news, the fire chief on site made the remark. He said, for some unexplained reason, it just quit blowing. It finally stopped. And it, I believe the wind was 45 miles an hour. Yeah, it was severe. <laughs> it was terrible. The wind chill was something. It was 50-something under with the wind chill. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, it was terrible. But what was it that caused me to do that? Uh, it, I believe it was the Holy Spirit. I believe it was a gift of the Word of Wisdom. A helper. Amen. Amen. I've had the Lord do that so many times, sometimes just to benefit me. Mm -hmm. I've had times where there was a, a, some, some uh, deception going on by people perpetrated toward me. And the Lord said, do this and you'll, do, you'll know what that's about. Right. And, uh, you know, isn't it funny because when people are mad at you, they want you to think it's all you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, glory to God. So that's just one of the gifts. And I'm gonna let me get through this real quick. Word of knowledge. Word of knowledge is, is when God just imparts to you insight and knowledge about things you didn't have any natural means of knowing. Yes. Now these aren't cheap parlor tricks. This isn't no. at your discretion. It's as the Spirit of God wills, not as you will. Right. And that's why people may have a, a, a manifestation such as a gift of healing. It doesn't mean they can just pray for any old person. Sometimes they have a particular gift. I had a gift of healing uh, toward 
people dealing with growth. We mm-hmm. we prayed for people other years. We had people that had uh, tumors. There's a lady had tumors mm-hmm. in her abdomen. Had three distinct tumors. And the Lord gave it to you. Yeah, yeah. The gift. <laughs> the, the Amen. Well, and we prayed for as, as a church. We actually laid hands on this lady and prayed for, her mm-hmm. and cursed them. The next day, the doctor went in there. And he said, I've never seen anything like this. Those tumors are there, but they're they're withered up, they're gray, they're dead and lifeless, and yep. they're laying loose. They're detached all the way to the roots. Right, right. Well, that's what we prayed over them. Yes. Amen? Yep. And, and I believe that was in part a manifestation of that gift at work. Mm-hmm. So there's the, the gift of the word of wisdom, the gift of the word of knowledge by the same spirit, the gift of faith. Uh, <laughs> the gift of faith will, will come into manifestation, and you just... Know that you know, and it's easier to believe than to doubt. It's the only way I can describe it. And I've True. seen that happen in my life. Yes. See, I, I don't think these gifts are just for the preacher. No. They're not just for the holy They're rollers not. of the tent revivals. Mm-mm. They're for God's children that need his help at any given point every day of their life. Yeah. And, and so uh, then it goes on to talk about the, the gifts of healings. Mm-hmm. Amen. Faith by the same spirit, the, the gifts of healings by the mm-hmm. same spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy. I'm, I'm not going to go into further detail because I want to get to something else today. To another discerning of spirits. Now, that doesn't mean that you got the gift of suspicion. I do want to linger on that a minute because there's a lot of people think they got discerning of spirits because they find all, all manner of things to, to attribute bad motives to others or blame them for, and that's not what it's about. No. It's simply the ability to see into the spiritual realm. Mm-hmm. Amen. And it's not at your will, it's at the Holy Ghost will. Right. It's not like, well, let me put on my spiritual glasses and look. It's, <clears throat> you know, it can be a vision. I can remember before I went to Rhema, I had a vision. I saw myself sitting next to a woman in a wedding dress, and the last thing I wanted to do at that time was get married. Uh, I didn't think it was God's will for my life, but, but he showed me myself mm-hmm. sitting next to someone. And when I asked him what the vision meant, he said, you're going to marry one of Ron House's daughters. Mm-hmm. Only reason I knew the name Ron House was I had a piece of paper that had his name on it for a tape lending library in Jacksonville, Florida. And I lived at the time in Bradenton, Florida. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, it turned out just so happens to be this is Ron House's daughter <laughs> that I married. Amen. One of the two. <laughs> <clears throat> so that, that was the Lord talking to me. And um, then it talks about having diverse kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues. We're going to get into this later, okay? I really plan to do that. But I want you to see that God has invested us with the supernatural through the person of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. so that we'll be equipped to reach this world yes. and tell them of God's love, not just in, in the wisdom that man's word teaches, but in demonstration of his spirit yeah. and of power. Yeah. Glory to God. Now look over, if you would, with me. This is what kind of got me started along this train of thought today. Uh, <clears throat> I, 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 I want you to understand that God loves you. He loves the people that you love. Mm-hmm. He's not indifferent to you. But see, if you don't know how to cooperate with him and how he uh, wants to flow, and, and I mean, there are limitations men put on God. Right. Right. Amen. We yeah. saw. Well, look on over very quickly to to. Let's go to Mark first. Go to Mark chapter six. Oh, and let's pick up down here. Mark six and verse one says he went out from thence and came into his own country. Speaking of Jesus and his disciples, followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this? which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands. So they were aware of the miracles and the healings yeah. that took place right. through his ministry. But then they began to bring him down to size. Mm. <clears throat> uh, it says in verse 3, Is not this a carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and Joseph, and of Judah, and of Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. Mm. Who's he to tell us what to do? Don't get offended with God. Don't. And and listen, the same thing goes when your preacher tells you something that you need to hear and you know in your heart you need to hear it, yeah. but you don't like the flavor. <laughs> 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 do yourself a favor and listen. Yeah. Yep. I've seen people that that had just listened. Yeah, it'll benefit I don't us. know everything, but I've learned some things over the years. And, and I try to use it to help people, not control people. No. And, and, uh, and yet we've had some folks that just disregarded anything we had to say. And, and Lord detriment. help them. Yeah. yeah. 
Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So it, it goes on down here. It says in uh, verse 4, Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, among his own kin, in his own house. And look at this, verse 5. Underline that. He could there. Mm -hmm. That goes to ability, not desire. Right. How did he know he could there do no mighty work? Mm. I, I believe that Jesus was sensitive enough to the spiritual climate <laughs> that he could sense the prevalence of that unbelief. Yes. It, it doesn't take a genius. Yes. <clears throat> and so it says, He could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. Yeah. So he still tried to minister what he could. But he wanted to do more than the people would allow him by the limitations they put on him. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And uh, let's go on over. I, I, I'll probably come back here. But look over to Luke chapter 4, if you would. Luke chapter 4. In Luke chapter 4, let's see here. Well, I don't. Okay. I thought I had it open. I didn't. Look down, if you would, to verse 1. It says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. So we can see here that he was led by the Holy Spirit into a place that most people wouldn't really want to go. Right. There may be right. times the Holy Ghost will lead you someplace you'd rather not be. <laughs> right. But if God led you there, you've got what it takes to make it through that right. and grace. come out victorious. His Amen. Grace. Now, I'm not going to go into more. I love to teach on that, and I'll get lost in there for hours or days <laughs> if we go into that. But look down, if you would, to uh, verse, let's see. Let's go to verse 13 toward the end of this. It says, When the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. I, I believe really what it's telling us is that the devil had had enough and he ran the other direction. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> what, somebody made some comment to Dad Hagen one time, the devil had him running. Uh, uh, not work Well, anyway. <laughs> I'm do it said something I'm doing the run, the devil's doing the chase and I'm doing the running. Got him on the run. Got him on the run, on yeah. The run. That's it. Got him on the run. <laughs> Trouble is that he's do doing the chase and I'm doing the running. <laughs> well that's a lot of believers, isn't it? <laughs> but it doesn't have to doesn't be you. To be. So it doesn't have to be me. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be me. <laughs> well look down if you would, verse twelve. Uh, uh no, not verse twelve, I'm sorry. Verse uh, fourteen. 13, well, the good of 13, since I botched it already. It says, When the devil had ended all temptation, he departed from him for a season. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit unto Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the regions around it. I want you to notice something there very quickly. Hmm. Victory is built upon victory. Yes. Every time you experience a victory overcoming temptation in life, you come out the stronger for it. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And it says uh, down in verse 14, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit unto Galilee, went out a fame of him throughout all the regions round about, and he called in their synagogues being glorified of all. Now look at verse 16. Here we go. <clears throat> Got your pencils ready and your seatbelts on. It says, He came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Now let, let me just interject this thought. How many of you have ever said, I don't want to go to that church that's full of hypocrites? <laughs> who hasn't said that? <laughs> Do you suppose there was anybody at this church who wasn't a hypocrite and right. yet Jesus went? Yeah, exactly. still went. Sometimes God will send you to a church full of hypocrites because he wants somebody that's sincere enough to live the reality Amen. of his love for him, even toward the hypocrites. Right, right. And so here Jesus <laughs> is. It says down here, He came to Nazareth where he'd been brought up, as the custom was. He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, stood up for to read, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now I just want to ask this question very quickly. How did he get here? I believe he was led by he the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. I believe he was absolutely led. Yeah. See, one reason people get into trouble is they don't learn to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, sometimes that may mean that you just get up and go about your day as usual, but you've got your ear toward heaven, so to speak, and you're listening for any 
direction. Specific direction by mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. or by the Lord. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And meanwhile, you're in general just doing what the Word says because you're learning the Word of God yes. as a disciple of the Lord. Yes. So it says, Jesus mm -hmm. returned to the power of the Spirit of Galilee, went out of fame. Down in verse uh, 15, he taught. What happens when the Word of God is being taught? Faith comes. It presents faith, doesn't it? In verse 16, it says, He came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, stood up for to read, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and to shame all the guilty sinners. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that isn't what it says. But why are preachers doing that today? Mm. You know, a, a, a brother offended is harder to be one than a strong, a strong city. city. Yes. <clears throat> I, I encountered some folks of a particular, <clears throat> well. Mm. <clears throat> religious persuasion. Yeah, a particular religious persuasion. I believe it's an absolute cult. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I didn't go to them and, and tell them how wrong all their, and I could. I've studied enough. I could have told them all kinds of things wrong with their religion and their doctrine, but I didn't do that. In fact, I walked up to him. I said, hey, I, did I hear you right that you said you're a such and such? And, and I'm not going to tell you what it was. Don't mm -hmm. need to. He said, yeah. And he's beaming with pride when he tells me. <laughs> I said, well, listen, if we just set all the religion aside, because I was raised in one particular church. You're raised uh, in a religion you believe in. Mm -hmm. I said, but if we lay it all aside, can I ask you a question? He said, yeah, what? I said, have you ever been born again? Because I happen to know that this particular group doesn't believe in the resurrection of Christ. Right. They believe it was all spiritual, not physical. And and, and so and some of you know who that is now. But anyway, <laughs> I, I said, do you, uh, have you been born again? He said, well, I believe in Jesus. Well, the devil does that. Yes. Right. That ain't good enough. No. And, and so I said, yeah, but have you ever confessed him to be your risen Lord and Savior? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was challenging his doctrine but not trying to be offensive to him. No, no. <clears throat> Walking in the love of God. And I was talk, talking to the ladies here earlier, and, and, and uh, Ralph was here as well, and, and I made the point about how when you're dealing with people that are religious, they're often smug and self-righteous, yes. mm -hmm. and they can be condescending. Sure. And so in the middle of it, I said, can I tell you a story about something that happened to me? They said, yeah, tell us. Tell us the story. And the guy's sitting there, the smug look on his face, and... and uh, I said, well, I said, when I was 20 years old, obviously I'm not 20 any longer. When I was 20 years old, I said, I overdosed and died. I went to heaven. Yeah. And, and uh, I said, and, and uh, when I got to heaven, it wasn't because I had done all these wonderful things. Amen. I, I said it was because I had received Jesus as my Lord. I said, I asked the people there. He said, well, who was there? I said, it was my grandmother and several generations, past generations of family members. Yeah. And, and uh he, he, I don't think he thought I had an answer. I don't know why. But, you know, just that smugness and that condescension. Yes. And, and, uh, and I start telling him that, I, well, I asked him, I said, how come I'm here? And they said, because you received Jesus as your risen Lord and Savior when you were a little child. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. And, uh, and he interrupted me. He said, well, if you were in heaven, why didn't you stay? If heaven's so wonderful, I said, well, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm glad you asked. And I said, the reason I didn't stay was when I realized how easy it was to get to heaven, the next statement I made was, my God, had I known it was this easy to get to heaven, I'd have told everybody. Yes. I said, so I'm here. Yes. I'm telling you. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, uh, it, it, you know, as you progress in a situation like that, either people are going to get more defined or they're going to open up a little bit. Yes. And it was funny because one of the fellows with him was turned the other direction. He wouldn't look at me, but he's turned the other direction. But everything I said about the new birth, he's sitting there nodding his head. Mm -hmm. And I found that. I found there's, there's some people that were disenchanted with the religion of the typical denominational churches that many of us grew up in, that they turned to this other group because mm -hmm. at least they were trying to do something. Yes. Yeah. But what they're trying to do is much do about nothing, and all it's doing is pacifying their flesh mm -hmm. while the devil entices them to hell. Yeah. you got to be born again. Jesus yes. told Nicodemus yes. that. Yes. He, now, isn't it interesting? He could have gone into great detail with everything Nicodemus believed wrong. Yeah. But he, he focused on one thing. He said, you must be born again. Right. 
what would happen if the church just did that? I said, listen. Yes. And I told these boys, yes. I said, and, and I'm, I'm not using the term boys to be offensive. They mm -hmm. were young men. I, I, I told them, I said, you know what? You just received Jesus. You get born again. We'll go, go to heaven. Then we'll sort out this doctrine. Right. I said, we'll have plenty of time to do it then. Right. But don't miss heaven. Right. And, right. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, anyway, so, glory to God. Mm, we're out of time, aren't we? We're way Are out we? of time. Oh. Yes. Oh, my. Golly. <laughs> that happened. The and we got the bat and the ball. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Right. right. Oh. <laughs> Lord, Lord. Can I go just another minute here? Yes. Yeah. It says in verse fifteen, he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. He came to Nazareth, where he'd been brought up, as the custom was. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. When he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel of the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recover the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now when it says preach the acceptable year of the Lord, it's talking about Jubilee. And, and Jubilee was a time of restoration of all that had been lost. And it was really symbolic of the restoration to humanity of all the devil had stripped from them. Yeah. And so he said, it's the acceptable year. This is a time of restoration. Verse 20 says, and he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him and it began to say unto him, this day is a scripture fulfilled in your ears. Mm. Mm -hmm. In other words, he's saying, I'm here to see you realize the recovery of that which was stripped from you yeah. through Adam's fall. And he closed the book, gave it again to the minister. Look down, if you would, to verse um, 22. Mm -hmm. It says, and all bear, you know, it's kind of funny because it's like Jesus just kept digging himself in deeper <laughs> and deeper, but he wasn't intimidated because no. he knew who he was. He knew what he was there to do and who was there to help him do it. Yeah. And so it says uh, down there in uh, verse 22, all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, You will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. <clears throat> and he said, that, you know, That's the equivalent then of saying, Well, if that's really God healing folks through you, right. go empty the hospital. Right. They were challenging Jesus to yeah. prove what they were not willing to believe. Yeah. Amen. And his word is proof enough. Mm -hmm. It's all the evidence you need, but you've got to choose whether you'll receive it or not. So it says uh, down here, of a truth, I tell you, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But <laughs> unto none of them was Elias sent, or Elijah sent, save unto Serapita, the widow at Zarephath. Do you remember that? She was a Gentile. Yes. And notice, how did, how did the prophet get there? God sang. He didn't just go out and say, there's a starving woman over there. I'll go beg some food from her and God will do a miracle. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't at his discretion. It was at God's discretion. Yes. And, and so when he went there, what happened? The woman complied with what he had. He said, he said go make me a cake. And, and uh, she made a cake. They ended up with, with meal and oil that didn't waste throughout the famine. Right. Right? Just what because, she, yeah. And, and the funny right. thing is, is she was a Gentile. Yeah. Yeah. She was a Gentile. Yeah. And, and and he's kind of putting this out in front of them. Mm -hmm. Now, now, what's the significance of her being a Gentile? She didn't have the covenant they had. Right. See, they, they didn't need to wait on God to do anything. What they needed to do was learn how to draw upon that which God had already provided. Yes. I remember Jesus seemed almost indignant with the woman that was bowed over the spirit of infirmity. And uh, you know they're more concerned about watering their cattle than seeing a, a sister human being uh, ministered to and her affliction alleviated. Yeah. yeah. Oh, not this daughter of Abraham. Yeah. <clears throat> That's a, a daughter uh -huh. to be healed right yep. now. I mean, she should have been healed. Is what he was saying. Yeah. Way before. Shouldn't have then. waited. Shouldn't have been this far along. She right. should have already been healed. Well, look down here very quickly. <clears throat> so he got there because the Holy Ghost led him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. We've got to be careful because we can tend to take upon ourselves more than what God has called us to. Yep. False responsibility. Yeah. And we can think, well, if they got a need, I can pray. Mm -hmm. Well, you can, but sometimes you need to pray for them, not with them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And, and so look on down here. In uh, verse seven, 
verse 27, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Many lepers were in Israel in the time of uh, Elisha the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, saving, saving Naaman the Syrian. And, and all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with <laughs> Naaman. Uh, here he's bringing a Gentile before him again. Right. He's the only one that got healed. Naaman, yeah. amen. Right. Now, what's he say? See, that implies to me there were all kinds of, uh, there were probably lepers within a strong a stone's throw of that prophet that, that would like to have been healed, right. but he wasn't sent to them, and they didn't come to him. And in this case, notice this, the the, pro, uh, or the leper came to the prophet. Right, right. And he didn't even cooperate at first. He didn't get his healing until he learned to cooperate with God. Right, right. See, there's some people that have approached God, and they failed but it's not because God doesn't want them healed. Right. They've just got to determine that they're going to learn what God would have them to learn so they can cooperate with God and allow him to do what needs to be done. Now, what happens when you do something, I'm going to say spiritual, when you pray for people and they don't get healed? Well, God must not have called me to pray for them. Isn't that what happens? Mm -hmm. Who likes to fail? Nobody. So, and, and technically, Jesus could have prayed for a whole bunch of people, and it would have gone nowhere. Or Elijah, or Elisha, they could have prayed for a whole bunch of people, it would have gone nowhere. Mm -hmm. When Jesus saw that the people would not cooperate, what did he do? Taught them. He taught them. Taught them the word. I used to look at this, and to bring faith. I used to think, well, you know, why didn't Jesus try to heal some of these people? Mm -hmm. He did. By teaching them. Yeah. Why did he teach them? Because if they were going to receive all God had for them, they needed to commit to the Word of God and learning the Word of God. Yeah. And, and see, there's some of you out there that maybe you don't need a miracle, but maybe you got a child or a grandchild or even a great grandchild. Maybe there's somebody in your family you love desperately and you see them suffering and you would to God that there was a prophet to recover the leper, mm -hmm. you know, a prophet to, to minister healing. It doesn't have to be a prophet. It could be you. Right. But you've got to learn how God does these things. Right, right. Amen? Yeah. Glory to God. Mm. So uh, we'll pick up with this next week. I, I went a little bit long on you. But I, I, I believe that will help you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Many believers follow after the need rather than the leading of God to minister to the sick. You've mm. got to be sensitive to the Lord. Amen? Glory well, to God. I would say everyone at any given time has a need, but we we need God's wisdom. In, in many situations, the need that we have is going to come whenever we receive insight and revelation knowledge from God's Word, feeding on God's Word in other areas. See, there are and things that will unlock the door. There are things that are ours already by yes. right of the new birth that yes. we'll never enjoy by sitting back and asking God to give them to us. Because in His Word, He tells us they're already given. He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Right, right. According to the knowledge of His Word. Yes. <laughs> Listen to this thought Israel had a covenant right to claim healing and provision yeah. at any given point. <laughs> Amen? Yes. The fact that they. Lack was on them, not God. Right. Amen. The same is true of us today. If right. we lack, the Lord, is the Lord your shepherd, number one. But if you lack, are you following the good shepherd's lead? Right. Because he'll lead you into abundance. Right. He'll keep you safe in danger. Right, right. Amen. Amen. And glory to God. And, and look mm -hmm. at it this way. When we consider Luke chapter 4 and, mm -hmm. and all, all that's said there, God could not compensate or overcome their unbelief and negligence. So they had to be taught. They had to be taught. Mm -hmm. I put the question on there. What if Jesus had tried to heal them? <laughs> that implies he didn't, but he did. We know that because I've already shared that. But right. what if Jesus tried to heal them? Right. The implication is that he didn't do anything, but he did. He taught them. Mm -hmm. it, it, to me, that's like shifting into four-wheel drive mm -hmm. you may not get through a, a you know a rut with two-wheel drive right but if you shift into four wheel jesus knew this was going to be a challenge but he he depended on the word you could if jesus could depend on the word we can too that's right amen that's right <clears throat> all righty well and thank god for his word and we need to receive teaching i'm sitting here thinking <clears throat> we all enjoy the gift 
of preaching because it stirs us up and builds us up, but without the gift of teaching, bringing the word to us, we don't have a foundation to build on. God wants us to have a foundation. Jesus wanted those people to have the word even when he wasn't going to be there anymore. Amen. Jesus gave the word. Jesus was the word in demonstration. And we have the word. And the reason we have the word is the word is as good. God is good to his word. And the word is as good as Jesus standing right here. Amen. That's why this is called, as it were, a, the, a will and testament. We have an Old Testament. We have a New Testament. And this is our inheritance. This yeah. is our Father speaking to us. I'm so grateful. And I was sitting here thinking, to, I've been thinking this last week about about how thankful I am that people try not to cry because I can't talk. There are people before us, and I'm so grateful that they went through, they were hit with ridiculous challenges and found their way through those challenges because they, what they, how they got victorious to the other side of it became a light light tower in a storm for us Amen. and you know you were talking about whenever you died and whenever you went to heaven and i don't like that you <laughs> died and went to heaven however i have come to deeply appreciate and i didn't know you then I, we hadn't even met at that point but you know what that has become a light tower of hope yes. to people who have loved ones who have gone on to glory yes. To hear someone, to have a just a glimpse of the goodness of God. Don't get mad at God. We need to really guard ourselves. There are a lot of people, there's a lot of, you know, I'm trying to be general here because sometimes you get glimpses whenever you're, when the Spirit of God's moving upon us. But there are those who have given in to a root of bitterness, and the reason they've given in to a root of bitterness is they're mad at God. Mm -hmm. They have entertained a mad on at God. And a, a lot of times it's because of what religion's taught them. Yes, yes. <clears throat> they're frustrated or somewhere, somehow, somewhere. Here's a real good example. Many years ago, uh, where we live, we're here at the church cabin. Many years ago, my, my parents lived nearby. She drew the floor plans to the house next door, brick home that they wanted. She witnessed to a, to a man who lived across the street from us. And do you know what his response was back then? He didn't want to, he, he told her, I don't want to hear nothing about God. What kind of a God would take a mother, a mother from, a child. from a child, from her husband and her child? So what had occurred was, and I'm not even going to go into the details, he was in the military, he was away. He was overseas during World War II. Yeah, yeah. And his <clears throat> wife took, took ill and passed away. Nobody even told him. He didn't find didn't out she had months. died, didn't know she was sick. Yeah, for months. Until he came home for and, months. and made landfall so, in California. And I'll guarantee you, people told him God took took her god did it so he or or in his background he had been taught this so he had a mad on at god yeah. well my mom prayed for him she didn't she didn't stop pray. don't stop praying for people because they act mad whenever we share jesus with them those are the ones pray more for because Absolutely. somebody who's mad is already stirred up the opposite of love isn't hate isn't yeah, isn't hate, it's indifference. And so when you run into people who are indifferent, those are harder hearted in a harder more harder more hearted resolute in their place. unbelief in the and they God. need our prayers as well. But mom <clears> continued <throat> to pray for this man and and we prayed. Years yeah. later we ended up uh, Mike built this log cabin and we ended up here and we continued those prayers and he came to the Lord. He came to receive. Now those prayers, I tell you, whenever we pray scriptural prayers, those prayers live on. But I thank God for for how important it is that we can latch on to his word and we need his word. I have found the Ephesians 1 prayer, you know, we've all heard it, but it will bring a light if we will dedicate ourselves, if we will recognize and latch on and say, Father, I need greater revelation of you every day and pray it in faith pray it in faith for ourselves and our loved ones who have received jesus as our lord and savior this is a huge uh it's pivotal but the reason it's pivotal is each one of us need to see something different each one of us are in different places but the holy spirit knows that and he will share with us what we need to see and i'm so glad that you are able to share what it was like your glimpse of glory 
you know, from whenever you went on prematurely and came back. And it was a mother's prayer. His mom prayed for him. And, and her prayer was, the doctors told him there was no hope. And her prayer was, God, if he can, if he can have a, a quality life here, if he can be a blessing here, keep him here. She let go of him. She let go of him. And there are some moms that have had to let go. They've had to let go. And their child has gone on to heaven. But that child is in the best place. They're in a prettier place than the prettiest place we've ever seen. Yes. They're walking in the comfort and the light that shines from the face of God. There's no sun there. They don't even have to have a sun there because of the glory that shines from God's face. And there Amen. are moms who, who need to recognize, need to receive this comfort and this strength. Dad Hagen passed away. Uh, I, I feel like it was several, it was several times at one point. And I'm so, I started thinking the other day, I'm so grateful that Dad Hagen had to learn to stand to receive healing from God's Word Amen. because so much rich dividends, Amen. that paid rich dividends, we are still reaping the benefits of today. And I've told the Lord more than once, Jesus, please give Dad Hagen a hug for me and tell him how much we appreciate that he stood in the hard places. If you are standing in hard places, you're being hit not because of what you see. You're being hit because of where you're going. You're being hit because of what God has ahead for Amen. us to do that he's preparing us for now. Amen. So we can, I, I pray that God would help us to press in with tenacity, the tenacity that only he can give, recognizing there are others who need our testimony. There are others who need to see the end of this, what, where you're standing, the end of that Amen. chapter, the end of that, <clears throat> and, and finally, the comfort and strength of the Lord. So like I said, don't get mad at God. If you're going to get mad at anybody because of things that have happened, get mad at the stupid slew foot devil. Lying He's the thief that devil. came to still kill and destroy, yes. not God. Yes. And so get, I'm not saying don't be mad, but direct it in the right place, in the be right direction. And sin not. Yes. Get mad at the devil. Draw close to God and say, God, I don't know what the heck happened here or there or why, but I trust you to show me what I need to see. Amen. Help me to see what I need to see. I'm teachable, Father. I want to know. I want to see. I need you to shine light in this dark place. That's what we need to do. Amen. Uh, bitterness is no way to go. It's a dead end. Let's Amen. pray for people to Amen. receive Jesus. Go ahead. Amen. Praise God. If you've never been born again, <clears throat> I want you to uh, pray with me. And what we're praying is the Word of God. In, in Romans 10, 8, it says, What saith it? The Word is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the Word of faith which we preach. Yes. Amen. Yes. But if thou shalt confess Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart, God is raising from the dead. From the dead. <laughs> thou shalt be saved. Yeah. For the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Yes. Now that sounds real complicated in the King James, but all it's saying is if you will choose to receive Jesus, to be your Lord and Savior, believing that God raised him from the dead, and you'll make a confession of his lordship over your life, mm -hmm. you'll be saved. Yeah. Well, I, what if I get it wrong after that? Well, then you can ask for mercy. You can ask for forgiveness yes. and receive it. Yes. You don't have to beg or cry no, or plead no, for no, it. No. God knew you were... He knew you were going to take some baby steps at the outset. Right. And he's just mm -hmm. thankful you're in the family. Amen. Yes. So make, yes. make this, if you would, make this your confession. I come to you, God, today knowing that I am incapable of saving myself, yes. but all things are possible with you. Yes. I choose this moment to receive Jesus as my risen Lord and Savior. Yes. Father, I believe you raised him up, yes. and I believe you're my Father because I confess Jesus to be my Lord and Savior, and I yes. thank you for it. Now, I want to challenge you. Start by telling yourself that. Thank yeah. God I'm saved. Yes. You know what? Just by making that confession of faith, <laughs> you're not going to go to hell. Right, right. Just by making that confession of faith, you're going to see other loved ones that have gone before you in the faith. Yeah. Amen? Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Amen. You, you get ready. This is an adventure uh, beyond is. compare. And Amen. There, and there are some that have gone through great <clears throat> challenges or great losses. God wants to bring restoration. You say, well, how, how can God bring restoration in this situation or in that situation? Listen to me. It is astounding what God can do. It really is. It is astounding is. the comfort, the strength, the insight, the, the 
the foundation that God can can lay out for us to, in order to uh, for Him to restore, bring restoration in different areas, Amen. and He's doing it quick. He's doing it real quick in areas as we as we receive from Him. It's like time's Amen. getting amped up. You know what? <laughs> Let me say this: the devil has a, a a tactic that he uses so frequently. He wants you to look back at past failures mm, don't do because that. that'll breed hopelessness in right, you. Right. Right. I don't care what your past was. You might have gone to some big healing crusade and didn't get nothing. Doesn't mean that God doesn't want you healed. Doesn't mean you can't receive your healing now. Right. right. Amen. Yep. And what we need to do is, you know, I mean, there's there's things that I look back. I missed opportunities because I didn't know some of the things I know now. Mm -hmm. Well, I know them now. Right. I might not could have helped somebody before, right. but I'm learning how to help them now. Yeah. And, and listen, you may be on easy street right now. Maybe you don't have any challenges. Maybe your family's doing great. Maybe everybody you love is just wonderful, healthy and whole. <laughs> <coughs> but what if they come under attack? Right. Right. Amen. <laughs> we can do something. We can do something. We can yeah. be prepared. We yes. can we can develop our strength in the Lord yeah. and in the power of His might. Right. Right. Ephesians six ten. Right, Amen. Right. God bless you. Thank you for being part of the service today. We consider it an honor to share the word of God Amen. with you. Amen. Amen. The Lord we bless believe you. that. And listen, you, if you sit under this long enough, you're going to be different. <laughs> yeah. It's not way. our not our fault. It's God's fault, and it's a good thing. Yes. God bless you. We will see you next time. Amen.